Can I get a big old yeah? Go with me to the book of Job. It's not Job, it's Job. Job's and better Job's. I was praying while I was away and praying after I got back, Lord, which direction do you want me to go? Because you kind of shift gears, you know, doing where, what we were doing and whatnot. And uh, Lord, how would you have me do it? The Lord gave me an interesting word for you. Found in the book of Job, the first chapter, the 21st verse. Probably familiar to everybody here in one context or another. Uh, quoted it a good percentage of the funerals that you've been to in your life. And um, the words of Job, verse 21, he said, Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now what is Job referring to here? Well, you know the first part of the chapter, Job was a wealthy man. A blessed man, a man of God, had seven sons and three daughters. He had flocks of sheep, herds of cattle, goats, all kind of wealth. He was, he was one of the most prosperous men in all his day. The book of Job is an interesting book because if you read commentaries, which I don't necessarily recommend that you do, but you know, you can study things and eat the hay and spit out the sticks. Uh, but the, the, the commentaries question whether Job ever existed or not. Many of them say that he didn't. The authenticity of the book is challenged. The uh, authorship of the book is uncertain. Some commentaries will say they'll attribute it to Moses. He wrote the book. Personally, and you don't find a whole lot of, of, uh, of um, agreement to what I'm about to say, but I think a case could be made for the fact that it was uh, Joseph, the uh, prime minister of Egypt, who preceded, of course, Moses by hundreds of years, who uh, was the author of this book. The book of Job is referenced by Jesus, who said, remember, remember, the book of Job is, uh, excuse me, not by Jesus, but by James, that's what I'm saying. The, the, uh, the book of uh, Job is referenced by James. James is the only one in the New Testament who references Job. There are no other references to him. I like to inform people and encourage people, if you're going to read the book of Job, don't ever try to read it apart from the book of James. God put the book of James in the New Testament to give us a commentary on Job. Job precedes Moses. It precedes the law. It precedes the understanding that even the Old Covenant saints had of God, much less the New Covenant saints. So Job experienced some tragedy. There were calamities, catastrophes that took place that wiped out his cattle, wiped out his, his uh, herds, wiped out his fortune, and finally took the lives of his children. And Job made this statement, the Lord has given and the Lord, or the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. And then in verse 22 it says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged the Lord, or charged God foolishly. So we see here something that a lot of people don't understand, and that's because they don't understand that Job is not attacking God from a standpoint of accusing Him of wrongdoing. Job is operating in limited light. Are you here? Job makes several other statements, and in the Scriptures it says that he did not sin. But there comes a point in the book of Job where he starts saying things, and it no longer says that he didn't sin, because Job's attitude changed. Job had a good attitude toward God at this point. From his heart he was speaking in his limited life. See, God doesn't hold people accountable for what they don't know. The, the law will do that. And they'll tell you that, you know, you can commit a crime. Well, I didn't know it was wrong. That's no excuse. The ignorance of the law is no excuse. But the Bible teaches us in the New Testament that before the law came, God did not hold them responsible for the law. Are you here? And Job preceded this, this dispensation of the law that came through Moses. So Job is operating out of limited light. 
And God has to work with him throughout the book of Job. And this is where James helps us out. For instance, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. James says, let no man say when he is tested or tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. James gives us the truth about that. People talk about the faith of Job. But the New Testament puts the emphasis on the patience of Job. The, the, the redeeming quality that God wants us to see from the book of James about Job is that Job didn't quit. He stayed with it. He didn't know everything. He didn't know what you and I know. He didn't have the light you and I have. But he didn't give up on God. And finally at the end God was able to bless him. And the scripture says, and God gave Job twice as much as he had before. So we see this verse in chapter 1, verse 21, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. What is our takeaway from that? The last clause of this verse is what I want you to see. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The reason that Job didn't sin and what it wasn't attributed to him for sin or for error in this particular case is because he had the right string but the wrong yo-yo. Any of y'all remember that old song? You got the right string, baby, but the wrong yo-yo. Well, Job had the right angle. He, had, he said a right thing, but he was attributing it wrong. And he cleaned it all up at the end of that statement with saying, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because when we get down to it like that song we sang, it's all in the name of the Lord. And that's what I want to talk to you about quickly today is the name of of the Lord. The book of Proverbs tells us in the 20th chapter that the name of the 18th chapter, the name of the Lord is a strong tower or literally a high tower. The righteous run into it and are safe or more literally, it's a high tower. The righteous run into it and they are lifted up. And so the Bible is progressive revelation, and as we come into the New Testament, we understand the power of the name, the name, the name. There's something about the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Now, the name, Acts chapter 3. Let's just look at this verse of Scripture and launch out from here. Acts chapter 3 and verse 11. Peter and John have passed by the gate called Beautiful. They have ministered to a man who sat there daily asking alms. Peter, in verse 4, fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, Look at us. Look on us. Verse 5, And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Boy, was he ever about to be pleasantly surprised. Thank God he was expecting. He didn't get what he expected, but he was expecting. Verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. I don't have what you're asking for, but I've got something, and here it is. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up, uh, stood and walked and entered in with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew it was him. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. Now we pick up in verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Verse 13, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Verse 16, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I want you to notice how Peter draws attention by the power of the Spirit of God. 
He focuses people on the name, the name. This name, this man, or his name through faith in his name. God has glorified his son Jesus. Glory to God. God wants us to understand. Now this is something to keep in mind about the early church. Remember, they didn't have the New Testament. They wrote the New Testament. They had the old. They dug out and were given light and revelation, the New Testament, out of the old. The New Testament is a commentary, if you will, on the Gospels and a commentary on the Old Covenant, given to us in the light of the Spirit of God. That's why the Old Covenant can't stand alone. That's why you should never try to be a keeper of the Old Covenant. Look at it, understand from it, learn the lessons, see the examples, apply them, but always in the light of the New Testament. But this, 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 these covenants that God has established and concluded and added to and, and brought us into this new covenant reality that we live in, it was all about this name. It started, the covenant started with a name. When Moses stood on Mount Sinai and saw the bush that burned but was not consumed, and the bush spoke to him, and Moses asked him this question. He said, who shall I tell them has sent me when God told him, go to Egypt, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. God gave him his name. He said, you tell them, I am has sent you. I am that I am. And that name was the name in the Hebrew that, they, that was represented by four letters. The transliteration of it to we that speak English is Jehovah. But the, the, the Hebrew is Y-H-W-H. There's no there's no vowels in the Hebrew language. Y-H-W-H, and it's pronounced, I've been told by the Hebrews, yad Hey vav Hey. That's those four letters. But it means, I am. I am. Then God added to his name later on. He told them, I am the God that healeth thee. I am the God your righteousness. I am the God who sees and provides. I am the God, the Lord of hosts the captain of the armies of God. God added these things to his name in order to explain his character. His name tells him who he is, tells us who he is, glory to God. Just like a lot of names have origins like that that meant something. Scott, my name, I don't know what it means. You know, I, when I hear Scott, I think of Scotland. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's where, where it originated. Maybe, maybe one of my ancestors, the first Scott, they called him Scott because that's where he wants them. Amen. And you got Millers because they were described, their names came from what they did and who they were. names came from identity with the people that received those names. Taylor. Uh, you name it. That's where they came from. Today, God's name reveals who he is. And he kept revealing, and he kept revealing, and he kept revealing until 2,000 years ago, a man was born, and God was born, and became the express image of God himself. And Jesus said about himself, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Before Abraham was, I am. He attributed that name, that holy name, so much so that they wanted to kill him for it, the legalist. But Jesus attributed that name unto himself. He took that unto himself to identify himself as I am the representative of the Father. But he didn't do it just to build himself up. He did it to build all of us up. Glory to God. And so throughout the, the book of Acts, we see that as they wrote the Bible, as they experienced these things, as the testimonies came forth, what they started with was two things. They started, number one, with unity, which is based on love, and the name of Jesus. That's all they had. Jesus told them in Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Who shall? They that believe in my name. And so they had that. They had those marching orders from God. And this is what we see here in Acts chapter 3. John and Peter leaving the temple, seeing that man. He's asking for money. Hadn't got any of that right now, but 
here's what I have. What do you mean you have it? Yeah, because Jesus gave it to them. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. His name, through faith in His name, has made this man strong. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was right. He was absolutely right in his heart. His thinking was wrong. He thought God took his children away. He thought God took his fortunes away. He thought God took his cattle away. He didn't. He didn't. He gave them. He was right about that. But he was wrong about who took it. But in his heart, he's right about something. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord has the power to give and it has the power to take away. Mm-mm-mm. When we go through the scriptures and we see all that was done in the name, in the old covenant, I love the Old Testament. I got to tell you because I've got the light of the new to explain to me what seems to be a contradiction, what seems to be confusing. All I have to do is come over to the New Testament and say, oh yeah, that's what the New Testament says. Now let's apply it over here. Amen. Are you listening to me? I think about David in 1 Samuel chapter 17. You put up the, um, put up the um, 45th verse, if you would, 1 Samuel 17, 45. I think about how he went down against Goliath as just a teenage boy. And I think about what he said. And this is what it was. 1 Samuel 17, chapter 45. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Here it comes. Can I have a drum roll, please? Ross, would you help me out here? Okay, we'll, we'll get there in a minute. Praise God. 1 Samuel 17, 45. All right. Then said David to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name, everybody say name, name. the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. You come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. I'm coming at you with a name. That tells me right there that the name of Jesus is a giant killer. We saw in Acts chapter 3 the name of Jesus is a painkiller. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord gives and the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That name has in it the power to destroy disease and pain. You know the man was in pain. He's laid there for his whole lifetime at the gate to beg. He's got calluses on his rear end. He's got, he's got no telling how many times his bones have been broken because he can't feel perhaps and whatever. He, he, you know he's in pain, but the name of Jesus eliminated his pain. And the name of Jesus will eliminate your pain and it'll eliminate your sickness. The name of Jesus is a giant killer. David proved that. Glory to God. Again, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a high tower, a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they're lifted up above the circumstances. Jesus compared, in the fourth chapter of Mark, worries and cares of life. He compared that to weeds growing up in your garden and choking the Word and choking the fruitfulness of it. So the name of Jesus is a weed killer. It'll put you in a position above every problem and every situation. It's a, it's a pain killer. It's a giant killer. It's a weed killer. We saw Jesus go up against, and I love this particular thing, in Mark chapter 5. Put up the scripture in Mark 5, the gathering demoniac, where he asked him, what is your name? Jesus went over across the Sea of Gadara, uh, uh, into, the, into the land of Gadara, the Sea of Gennesaret, into the land of Gadara. There he encountered a man who was a, 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 a demoniac. They, they bound him with chains. Uh, the man was so, exhibited such supernatural demonic strength that he broke the chains. He ran around in the graveyard, cutting himself with stones, naked, no clothes. He just, he was out of his mind. He was fully uh, 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 possessed and controlled by demonic power. And Jesus confronted him. You found that scripture? Put that up there. Jesus confronted him and he had told him, those demons that were in him, to come out of him. Because that man rushed him. Tried to bum rush him. Tried to scare Jesus. But Jesus doesn't scare. Are you listening? And Jesus stood his ground and the guy fell down and, and they said, are you going to torment us before the time? Now look at this. 
Jesus asked him, he had told him before, come out of this man. And the, the, the spirit argued with him. And look at this. I saw a light on this I hadn't thought about before. He asked him, Jesus asked him, what is thy name? What is your name? Are you getting it? Yeah. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion for me are, we are many. Okay, your name's Legion and you are many, but my name is Jesus. Why else would he ask him what his name is? When the demon argued with him about what is going to be the outcome of this situation. He argued with him and said, have you come to torment us before the time? Jesus said, what's your name? Do you remember my name? What's your name? Let's see. Legion, Jesus, now you're out of here. Well, can we at least go into pigs? Have at it. And even there, they couldn't enter those pigs without Jesus saying, okay. Are you here? I love that. What is your name? When something stands up and defies you, when something comes against you, when something challenges you, ask it, what's your name? Cancer? Cancer? Is that all you got? That was Jesus' attitude. Legion? Is that the best you can do? What's your name? Lack? What, what is your name? Need? What, what's your name? You see, God has given us a name that is above every name. I know he gave it to Jesus, but Jesus then conferred it to us. A name. Everything in the world, everything in the universe, everything in life has a name. Every animal had a name. Adam named them. But God named Jesus. Man named the names in creation, but God named his son. When something challenges you, when a need challenges you, what is your name? See, the name of Jesus is a zombie killer. It's a pain killer. It's a weed killer. It's a giant killer. It's a zombie killer. That man was a walking zombie. He was fully taken over by demonic power. If you'd seen him, man, you'd need a change of underwear because this guy was a beast. I'm serious. Most Christians, maybe not you, but many Christians that don't know what you know, they'd be running for cover. If you've never encountered a demon power manifesting itself like that, it's quite a shock the first time. But this thing rushed Jesus, this zombie-like creature rushed Jesus with no, no feeling of pain, no, no limitation of strength, just breaking chains and cutting himself and enjoying it. Rushed Jesus, and Jesus immediately took control. And even when challenged, what did you say your name was? I'm liking that. I don't know about you. The name of Jesus is a zombie killer, Hugh. There's nothing that is a match for it. There's nothing. On the other hand, Job had it right. The Lord gave and the Lord takes away. He can take away the pain and he will. He can take away the sickness and he does. He can take away the fear and he does. He takes away the lack and he does. He does that. The name of Jesus can take away the beast in people. And it does. Amen. You don't have to fear what the devil's doing in your family. You've got a name. Yes, yes, when the thoughts come to you and say, I'm going to kill your kids. I'm going to have them. They'll be lost. I'm going to destroy your family. I'm going to destroy all you work for. Just remember the words of Jesus. What's your name? Tell me your name because i got another name I want you to hear. Glory to God. I said glory to God. On the other hand, the name of Jesus has power to give. It gives life. It gives strength. It gives hope. It gives in peace. It gives encouragement. It gives victory. Glory to God. What's your enemy's name? What's your enemy's name? What's that specter's name that stares at you? In the dark, things are quiet, you're not surrounded 
by people of faith. What, what's that name? Philippians chapter 2. And God has given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Satan, what's your name? Spirit of fear, what's your name? I got a bigger name. I got a higher name. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Put that up there for me, please. Philippians 2, 9. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord we bring this service to a close. Look at this. Wherefore, God also, God did this. God did this. Highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every name. Next verse, that at the name of Jesus, every knee, everybody say every. Every knee. Everybody say every. Every knee should bow of things in heaven. Well, that takes care of the spirits that we deal with. Of things in the earth. Well, that takes care of the natural circumstances. And things under the earth. I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what, what do we bother with that? Uh, unless it means let's just call the gold and the, and the silver and the coal out. We got authority over that. And things under the earth. Next verse, verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what those demons, those zombie demons did. They said, we know who you are. We know you're the Son of God. Have you come to torment us before the time? Jesus didn't say it, but the implication was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what I've come to do. Yeah. You shouldn't have done what you did way back when. Now then, you're mine. You're dead meat. Thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God for the name of Jesus. Thank God for the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is a zombie killer. A fear killer, a care killer. It's a grief killer. A grief killer. Monica's father went home to be with the Lord last week. David's brother went home to be with the Lord about three weeks ago. But is there a, is, is there a sense of loss? Of course there is. You know, I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want to see my kids move to Japan. <laughs> just be so far away, you know, you just wouldn't be able to reach out and touch. So there, there's a sense of loss, but is there a real loss? No. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Amen. Are they in our future? Why? Because of the name of Jesus. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They're saved. We're saved. We'll be reunited. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. This separation is brief. It's temporary. The world looks at a separation like that as a, as a finality. It doesn't know. But you do. Yeah. I do. How do we know? Because of the name. Amen. You called on the name. 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 I called on the name. We're bound for victory Amen. by the name of Jesus. Amen. They're in our future. They just went ahead. They just went ahead. So let them get the, you know, the chili cooked. And we'll eat it when we get there. Whatever, whatever. They're just there prepping for us. But how did that happen? There was a name given. Up until 2,000 years ago, nobody had access to that name. Only parts of it. Only temporary 
aspects of it. But today, we have a name. So, when the zombies arise, when the pains show themselves, when the giants poke their heads up, just remember the words of Jesus. What's your name? What's your name? I got, I got a name I want to use on you. What's your name? I got a name that's above your name. Just tell me your name and we'll finish this up real quickly. Amen. Cancer? Oh yeah, that's an easy one. The name of Jesus kills cancer. Heart problems? Oh, piece of cake. The name of Jesus creates new hearts. Glory to God. Money? Money troubles? Are you kidding me? The name of Jesus. Oh yeah, the name of Jesus. That's money cometh in Jesus' name <laughs> to me now. Why? Because I'm a whiz bang? No, because I got a name that's above every name. Money's a name. Debt's a name. Debt goes, money comes. Are you here? Amen. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Let's kill some giants and zombies this morning. All right? First of all, let's be assured that everybody has access to that name. In the book of Acts, there was a guy that saw Paul casting out devils by the name of Jesus, and he tried it himself, but he, he wasn't born again. He didn't have a covenant with God. See? I mean, you may think You'd like to be a web, but until I adopt you, that's not your name. On the other hand, you may be a web and think I'd like not to be a web until I unadopt you. You still got a problem. That's the way it works. You get the name, it's the family name. You got to be a part of the family. How do you do that? Well, that's easy. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Jesus said, you must be born again. How do you do that? Call on the name of the Lord. For with the mouth, for with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for everybody that's watching and for anyone in, who, who might be in this room or listening to this recording or in any way being touched by this broadcast. By this, by this message, I pray right now that their heart would be open, the eyes of their understanding would catch a glimpse of light, and they would in faith call on the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart. I confess you with my mouth as Lord. I believe that you're alive and that you hear me now. And that's all it takes. Glory to God. Now then, if there's anybody here and you've got any kind of pain in your body, just stand up. Any kind of pain you want to get the victory over. Glory to God. Remember, the name of Jesus is a painkiller. Those of you that are close by, could you just reach out and lay your hand on, touch, lay your hand on the shoulder or touch one of these? Father, in the name of Jesus. Be bold. These signs follow them that believe in the name of Jesus. They lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over sickness and pain in the body of each and every person here. Joint pain, muscle pain, nerve pain, bone pain, organ pain, anything causing pain has a name, the pain itself is a name, and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Such as we have, we give today. We give of ourselves and of our faith in the name of Jesus. Satan, take your hands off God's property in Jesus' name. What's your name? Pain? There's a name that you have to bow to. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let's thank Him for it. Let's all thank Him. Everybody thank Him. 
Let's all praise him for it. Everybody might not have needed it, but we can all praise him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Is there any grief in here today? We've touched on it. Sometimes just the teaching of it, just the sharing of it's all it takes. But I speak to any residual of grief over you, Monica, and over you, David, and over anybody else here who's ever had to say goodbye to someone that it was hard to let go. I, I take authority in the name of Jesus. What's your name? Grief? No. Jesus is the name that you answer to, that you say yes, sir, to, and that you go in Jesus' name. You need some financial help? Anybody need some financial increase? Anybody believe in God? You got a, got a situation like that? Father, in Jesus' name, we call in the increase. We call in the supply. Lack, you're a name. Need, you're a name. Debt, you're a name. We speak to you, command you to go and command a flow into your life, into your hands, into your business, into your, into your life, into your checkbook, into your home, into your finances in Jesus' name. We call that forth. You're sowers. God's able to do this. And we demand it in the name of Jesus. Everybody say the name. The name. The name. Say the name of Jesus. Say lack. Is that your name? Bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Woo, glory to God. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Any other giants anybody's facing? You got a legal giant out there in front of you? You got a business giant? You got something like that going on? Raise your hand. You got a giant? The name of Jesus is a giant killer. We don't come against that giant in our name. We don't come with sword and shield and spear. We come against that, name, uh, that, that, that giant in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And just like David took Goliath down in the name of the old, the old name that they had access to, we got a new and better name above every name, and we take that giant down in Jesus. Praise God. Isn't this good? Isn't this simple? Isn't this good? Never lose faith. Never lose sight of the power of the name of Jesus. Praise God. We're not at the mercy of, of elements. We're not at the mercy of Satan. We're not at the mercy of circumstances. We've got a name. Name. A name. The name of Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Now listen. The Old Covenant. I'll close with this. Exodus chapter 20. God gave Moses Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. First one, very first one he said was, you shall have no other gods before me. First thing he said. Told him not to make any graven image or anything like that. Then the third thing he, I think it was he said to him was, you shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Now let me elaborate on that just briefly. That doesn't mean what I was brought up to think it means. I was brought up to think that if somebody said God thee, that was taking the name of the Lord in vain. Wait a minute. He said the very first thing he said to him was, you shall have no other gods before me. So there are other gods than God, the God we serve. There are other gods. He said you'll have none of them before me, right? Some of them are made up. Some of them are backed by real demon spirits. Nobody in his class, but there are other gods, you understand? But the thing is that God is a title. You know, the British say, the Canadians say, God save the queen. God save the king. We say, not so. <laughs> we don't believe in kings and queens. But king is a title. Queen is a title. In my lifetime, there have been a number that have, of, 
royal monarchy in, in Great Britain and so forth that have worn the title king or queen. That changes. It's not a name. It's a title. So to say God anything, God bless, God darn, God anything, you just reference in a title, not a name. What, what did that God on Mount Sinai say His name was? We talked about it a while ago. I am that I am. That name was used along with other prefixes and suffixes in naming people. For instance, Joshua makes use of that part of God's name. And what it literally means is Joshua means Jehovah is salvation. Well, Jesus in English is the name Joshua. In Portuguese, it's Jesus. In Spanish, it's Jesus. We know him in English as Jesus. That's the name of the Lord. He said, don't take it in vain. Don't throw it around casually. Recognize that that's, that's, that's the one, when you pull it out of the holster, somebody's going down. Are you hearing me? Yes. But if you're just slinging it around casually, and, and really, it doesn't bother me at all. I remember when Rhett, Rhett Butler on Gone with the Wind used the D word. That didn't phase me. My goodness, I, I talked worse than that when I was an infant. <laughs> I mean, just a toddler, not an infant, but a toddler. <laughs> My dad had to quit cussing because I'd picked it up. And I was in there crying one day, and, and Dad came in there and said, what's wrong? And he said, I said, oh, Daddy, I can't get my GD shoes untied. <laughs> now, I don't remember it, but I was told that. And that's when Dad looked at Mom and said, nah, I better make some adjustments. <laughs> and um, so anyway, that, that words like that, that, that doesn't bother me. But when I hear on movies and in television shows and all this, the way that they just are so, so loose and so irreverent and dishonorable with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Man, that rubs my spirit. I just, because I know that Satan has people deceived and they don't realize the power in that name. You'll never hear me saying that. Say stuff like God Almighty. That's not a name. OMG. I joke about that. That's not a name. Dear God. That's not a name. That's a title. He didn't say don't take my title in vain. He said don't take my name in vain. You keep the name of Jesus in an honorable sheaf. And when you pull it, mean business. And you'll find that it cuts like a hot knife through butter. Amen. It will separate you from the giants and the zombies. It will cause things to happen that you want to see happen. If you'll use that name with faith, reverence, and honor, and never mishandle it or treat it with disrespect or dishonor.